I think one of the most valuable things in your book is what you say about forgiveness. And you start right out by defining forgiveness, and you say forgiveness is a vertical commitment that's followed by a horizontal transaction. What's that about? Well, the, the first thing I have to do is I have to give that wrong to the Lord. I, I believe in God's justice and His mercy. I believe in His presence. I do believe that He rules His world well, and I'm going to entrust you to His care. I'm not going to carry this wrong. Now what that does is that prepares my heart for having the horizontal transaction with you. The reason I don't want to forgive is I want you to be judged. And I don't want to let go of that uh, issue. So I carry it with me and uh, I'm nurturing uh, the feelings of this injustice or this wrong that you've done rather than I do believe in the presence, the goodness, the wisdom, the sovereignty, the grace of God, I entrust you to His wisdom and His justice, His mercy. That frees me to forgive you. I remember reading an old theologian one time who said the problem with, with forgiving is that we, we, we love our, 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 our need for justice more than we love the person that um, you know, has wronged us. And our, our, our perspective on justice may be very distorted, too. Yeah. Well, absolutely. Well, but our con he says our conscience won't allow us to forgive. Well, there you go. Uh, I, I would think of it another way. I, I think uh, often in my relationship with Luella, my wife, my problem isn't that I haven't loved Luella enough. My problem is I haven't loved God enough. And because I don't love God enough, I don't love Luella the way I should. Because if I'm not lo loving God, I'm inserting myself in his position. It's about my plan, my will, my sense of justice, my sense of the moment. It's all about me. And I, I actually think that you fix marriages first vertically before you fix them horizontally. Um, how? how? How does that happen? How do you fix something vertically? Just from your own private, personal, devotional life, and then it springs out of that uh, functionality with the Lord? I, I, here's where it starts. Um, that I quit telling myself that my greatest problem in life is outside of me. My greatest difficulties in life are inside of me. Hmm. Um, think about this. Second Corinthians 5.15 says that Jesus came so that those who live would no longer live for themselves. The DNA of sin is selfishness. Right. That means sin in its fundamental form is antisocial. That means that it will cause me to reduce the people in my life to vehicles or obstacles. You help me get what I want, I love you. If you're in the way of what I want, I get upset at you. So fixing a marriage vertically begins to say this, I am my biggest marriage problem. It's me. I don't so much need first to be rescued from you. I need to be rescued from all those instincts inside of me that create that selfishness that is the standoff in marriage. And I start, I start looking at me, I start believing I have been given grace for this relationship. I get concerned about pursuing that grace for me. I'm doing vertical things that change the way that I respond to you. Because you're like me. You're as broken as I am. You're as messed up as I am. You're as selfish as I am. You're as fearful as I am. I get it because I'm now dealing with these things between God and me that prepares me to respond to those things in you in a much more gracious way than I ever other, would otherwise. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, I read the book and I, I don't recall, and you know, when you're reading a book of 300 pages, there are moments when your eyes glaze over, okay? Yeah. I mean, that happens, especially when you're under uh, pressure to get the book done before the interview. Do you talk about indifference at all in here? I don't recall you mentioning indifference there, and, and, and the, the role it plays in the erosion of a marriage. Well, what I, what I do talk about is laziness. Oh, right. You do thing. talk about laziness, yeah. which, okay. And, but and having a, a work ethic in your marriage. Yeah. Like, uh, it seems to me that indifference is, is a big role. Like, if, 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 if your wife gets a sense that you don't really care, yeah, do what you want. You know, I'm going out with the boys. I'll see you later. I mean, that, that's got to erode uh, oh, it's, it's a marriage. Oh, it's deadly. I say to people all the time, go clear a plot of land, plant little seedlings, and walk away for three months. What do you think is going to happen? Yeah. Those seedlings will die. They'll get dried out, 
they'll get choked by weeds. How much more important is the garden of your marriage? You can't walk away from it. You can't be indifferent. You can't be lazy. It won't stay healthy if you are. And I don't think most couples getting married understand the work ethic that they have to commit themselves to in order for that marriage to stay beautiful. Oh. Nobody tells you these things. I mean, I mean, if you if you see them modeled, uh, you have a huge advantage. You know, I grew up with uh, a very healthy, happy marriage being modeled in front of my eyes. Mm -hmm. You know, for the first 20 years of my life. But if you don't see it modeled, how how does one even know that there's work involved, that there's uh, give and take, that there's huge uh, amounts of grace that need to be extended, and, and and moments when you hold your own counsel and bite your tongue and and, and try desperately to grow up. I mean. Uh, Apart from reading a book like this or sitting with someone who understands marriage, uh, people are blindsided. And, I, and I, th I think that's the reason for the title, What Did You Expect? I think yeah. thousands of couples go into marriage completely unprepared because those harsh realities haven't been told them. Not in a way that makes you scared to death, but because they're surrounded by this message of God's grace, makes you wise but gives you hope. Now, something else that I was wondering about as I read your book, because uh, it's a pretty heavy book in many ways, and it's, it's very challenging. You've really put a lot of work into it. Uh, what role does fun play in a marriage? Just good old-fashioned fun. Well, I, th I think that's important, too. Uh, I'm a man with a lively sense of humor. We do a lot of laughing. Yeah. I think part of what grace does in you is it causes you to quit taking yourself so seriously. Mm -hmm. People just take themselves too seriously. Mm. I'm a bit of a mess. Mm. It's okay. For us to talk about that, we do dumb, foolish things that we ought to step back and laugh at. Uh, there are moments where it shouldn't be serious. We ought to just have a good time. Yeah, a sense of humor is great, eh? Yeah, very important. Uh, do you and your wife do stuff together for fun? And, and if so, what do you do? Yeah, we, we, uh, we just love being together. My, my wife is a manager of a large private art gallery in, in Philadelphia. and. That whole world is real important to us, and we enjoy it. We, we love good restaurants. Mm -hmm. uh, we love traveling places. Uh, does she ever uh, display your art? Yeah, but she doesn't show me any favors. She puts <laughs> me through all the stuff that she puts through all her other artists. She says she won't turn this into a vanity gallery, and I respect that. You're, you, you do abstract art. Yeah. yeah. I, I wish yeah. we had some pictures of it. Yeah. Well, it, the book is, is called what, do you, what Did You Expect? Redeeming the Realities of Marriage, and if you, if you want to a primer in, uh, or primer, however it's pronounced, in some of the challenges of marriage, not in a negative sense, but a very sober sense. You want to get this book. It's published by Crossway Books. Just out, right? Yep. Just out. Yep. And um, I expect it's in, uh, is it both secular and Christian bookstores? Yeah, you can, you can get it around. In, or Amazon? Yeah, and my website as well. Your, your website yeah. is what? Just paultripministries.org. paultripministries.org. Yeah. Paul Tripp, T R I. Double P, right. ministries.org. Thanks for coming our way. Oh, it's been great. Thanks. Okay, great. We'll be back right after this, friends.